Hi. I hope everyone has had an awesome, awesome week. Uh, we have a great lesson in store for this week. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with a moment of prayer so we can get right into the lesson. Father, we come to you today. Thank you for life, for health, for strength. Thank you for giving us this day. Thank you for giving us this lesson. Now, God, I ask that you open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to your word so that we can have a better understanding. It is in your son Jesus name that we pray. Amen. So our lesson title this week is Jesus claim to deity. And when someone uses the word deity, we're talking about God, a God presence, a God image. So we're going to see Jesus claiming to be God and we'll see the reactions of the people that he's making this claim to and our lesson is um, taken from John the 8th chapter the 48th through the 59th verse and our lesson this week continues a heated exchange that we saw in our lesson last week that was at the beginning of chapter 8 so let's start, get started reading um, verses 48 through 51 so our, our verses start this way. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. So we see Jesus talking to some somebody in it, a group of people, and it says the Jews. So it's not just talking about all the Jews at the time, it's talking about the Jewish leaders, most probably the Pharisees, the ones who were so intent on following the law. And so we see them calling Jesus a Samaritan, and they say he has a devil in him. Well, if you read the 20 verses between last week's lesson and this week's lesson, you'll see that they continue this heated exchange in which Jesus tells, tells them about who is the true children of Abraham. And so in verse 48, they, they try and flip what Jesus said uh, unto, to them in the prior verses by saying, calling him a Samaritan. Well, the Samaritans, they were known as a half-breed. They were partly Jewish, partly other things, and they were mixing, and they, they weren't true, they weren't pure as in the Jewish people, uh, Jewish leaders, and so they were looked upon as being half-breeds, less than the Jewish people. And so, um, they even go on to say that Jesus is not of God, but he's of the devil because he had made a similar statement about them in those 20 verses. So Jesus responds to those Jewish leaders calling him a Samaritan and a devil by saying to me, having great compassion to them because he says, you have disrespected me. He tells them, I honor the father. And he's talking about God, the Father. But you dishonor me. This isn't about me. It's about the one who sent me. So he even offers forgiveness to them after they've disrespected him so much. In verse 51, because he tells them, If you keep my word, you shall never see death. So he's offering them salvation, a, a chance to have eternal life. So let's see how these Jewish leaders respond to Jesus' offer of salvation. So let's read from verses 52 through 56. Then Jesus said, the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, who maketh thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, and my honor is nothing, it is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like you. But I know him, and keep his saying. 
your father Abraham rejoiced to see me, see my day. And he saw it and was glad. So after Jesus offers eternal life, not seeing death, the Jewish leaders, they say to him, we know you are the devil. We know you are the devil. And the reason they say that is because Abraham and the prophets, they're dead. They kept God's word and they died. So who are you to say if we follow your word that we're not going to die? So they're looking at physical death. They're not hearing spiritual that you, there's, there won't be a spiritual death. The, G, the Jewish leaders, they view Jesus, what he was, uh, he was saying strictly on the physical, not in the spiritual. And so he must be of the devil because he thinks he can out-trick death. <laughs> but Jesus, he responds to the Jewish leaders by saying, if I want honor, glory for myself, it means nothing. It doesn't mean a thing. God the Father will glorify me, but you don't know him. <laughs> you know, that's real cold what Jesus said, it, but you don't know him. <laughs> Jesus goes on to tell him, I know him, and I obey him. Your father Abraham, he rejoiced at my coming, and he was glad. So you know the, the, the Pharisees, the Jewish leaders, they ain't going to like that statement too well. So let's go ahead and end the rest of our lesson and read verses 57 through 59. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast to him at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So the Jewish leaders, they tell Jesus, you're not even 50 years old. That's interesting to me. They know all about Jesus. <laughs> they know he ain't even been what his age is. <laughs> but anyway, so how have you seen Abraham? Because Abraham, he lived longer than <laughs> 50 years prior to Jesus. I mean, he was way back when. It, it was thousands. I'm not sure the exact amount of years, but it was because yeah, it was 400 years between the Old Testament and New Testament. So we know it was an extended period of time before when Abraham lived. So they asked Jesus this, you know, saying to them, you ain't even 50 years old, so how could you have seen Abraham? But Jesus in verse 58, he says one of the most powerful statements he makes during his ministry. He says, before Abraham was... I am. I am. That is a statement they should know from ex the Exodus story. When Moses says, who should I say sent me? I am. They know I am. They know that is God. That is God himself. And so the Jewish leaders, they're very legalistic. So what do they want to do? They want to stone Jesus. And follow the Levitical law because they think that he's being blasphemous by saying that he is God. And so, Jesus, he's able to get away from them. He gets away from them from, and leaves the temple. So, that is a brief description of the lesson of Jesus' claims to deity. I only have one takeaway from this lesson. And if Jesus, he just illustrates it so powerfully. In our discipleship journey... You got to know who you are. Who are you? Can you answer that question? Always be able to answer that question. The Jewish leaders, they called him a Samaritan. They said that he was of the devil. He knew he wasn't none of that. If somebody calls you something, can you identify who you are and be successful in who you are? He tells them very specifically, I am. He identifies his deity, his divineness, and he accepts it and he says it. Can you accept who you are and say who you are with strong conviction? Just be able to answer who you are. Know who you are. So that is our lesson for this week. Um, we will continue on in our study of John next week. And our lesson will be Jesus' response, responses to a dire need. And that is John 11, 1 through 16. I look forward to uh, seeing you next week. I hope you have an awesome, awesome week. And I'll see you then.